Good evening, everybody. Welcome Hi. to the Castro Hello. Files. Welcome. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight, honey? I'm great. How about you? Doing well. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. We've got another alien abduction we have story. Aliens on the brains right aliens now. Aliens this week yeah. is kind of the theme. It's kind of fun. It's fun. Yeah. I love. We haven't done this same type of story together before, so that's kind of fun right. and my, you know, like we talked about it. Cute I was and like, flirty. I We're doing do the same it. stories. Mm, flirty. Flirty. Yeah, absolutely. So mine's gonna be take us to a little bit different place. New England based still. Right. But mine's got I had mentioned in the last episode, if you caught that one, um, that mine kind of it kicked off in my head because of my mom. Right. And I'll get into that here in a couple minutes. Okay. But First and foremost, go out check us out on the bar is open with Beth and Greg for the audio portions of the show. We download them out to any place you can find, you know, an audio podcast, iTunes, Spotify. Give us a little love out there, a little five star review if you don't mind. But also like subscribe to the show on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Hit the like button if you're watching. Yes, right please, now. and share because share. sharing is caring. Absolutely, and we care about you. Care about us back and share us. There you go. So do that. <laughs> also go out to check out our, we have got some some shirts and some gear and stuff like that out on minorleaguestudios.com, the Castro file. So you just go into the collections, into the shop section, and you okay. can go out. We've got, you know, stainless steel tumblers. We've got iPhone cases with little alien heads on them and stuff like that. A hat. The hat's like probably. Baseball cat's really cute. Baseball cat's probably my favorite, yeah. right? We've got shirts for guys and girls on it as well. Multiple different kinds of co uh, colors. Yours, the wine tumbler. I want that wine tumbler. We need to get. I really need to get on ordering you the wine tumbler. I want that wine Maybe tumbler. Maybe by next you. week when the Maybe next episodes, have we'll have them. But we just got to get them ordered. Um, but they've got shirts, like I said, for guys and girls, different mm -hmm. color styles, certain things like that. So go out and check that out if you don't mind. And let us know what you think about it as well. I think that's important as well. If, if you don't like them, let us know. We'll yeah. change it. If, if you've you like got some them, suggestions, let us know. we'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into my story. And I today. do want to say we really take the suggestions seriously. We're doing alien stories because someone in comments asked us to do more alien stories. Absolutely. So we listen. And if you guys have something you want to hear about, let us know. And we'll research, well, I'll research it and find it. it. Absolutely. So we mm -hmm. try and do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love alien stories. Give the audience what they want. Abduction stories. So mine's going to go into a little bit of an alien abduction story. Cool. But before I get into that, like yes. I had said, my mom lived in northern New York. She mm -hmm. lived in Albany, New York for a number of years. Mm -hmm. This is back in like the early 2000s. And um, her significant other at the time had a cabin, literally a cabin in the woods, <laughs> up in some lake up in the Adirondack Mountains. Okay. And she said it was literally one of those picturesque kind of places. You sit on the porch next to a lake. There's mountains off in the distance setting the scene for you. Right. Right. And she goes, I was sitting there reading one night. And keep in mind, iPhones came out in 2007. Right. This is before that. Right. So okay. she wasn't just messing around on her phone and got right. like lost down a TikTok hole. Right. Right. <laughs> like I do. Yeah. Right. And um, she goes, literally, it was like eight o'clock and then it was two o'clock in the morning. Oh, geez. That's a lot of time. Right. And she goes, what happened? What happened to the time? Maybe? For six hours. I mean, maybe she was tired. And ends up in the same spot. Doesn't remember That's anything that, that happened. Is, I mean, it is weird. That's a lot of time. Right. So, and she also said that when that happened, like, it just felt like, no, like it was just a blink. Right. It was just gone. Like nothing had changed. So, you know, it's like, what do you do with that time? Like, what do you, what happens with that? Right. So I'm going to get into, I'm going to share a couple of um, kind of like key things about some New York state statistics and okay. some other statistics too as well. So aliens among us, this is from the New York post. This is from December of 2022. Okay. So ET might not be phoning, ET phone home. but he's posing. Right. So the New York, the National UFO Reporting Center reports that purported alien ship sightings in the Big Apple ticked up 4% this year. So this oh. was as of 2022. And for the first time, New Yorkers submitted pics to the center to try to back up their cosmo 
cosmic claims. In 2022, the center received accounts of 28 sightings, up from 27 in 2001. Okay. So 4%. I mean, it's not big, but it's junk. Right. And a dozen dozen new cases, photographs, uh, new cases, photographs were submitted thanks to user-friendly revised website. Whether the mostly out of focus visuals, why are they always taken with the potato phone? I don't understand. Or people who can't keep their phone still. Right. I don't. It's a mystery. It's part of the UFO potato phenomenon, phone. right? Potato Maybe phone. because they're so amped, they're seeing something. They're like uh, just shaking, right? Their journal is so, going. Mostly out of focus visuals are actual proof. Or uh, proof the truth is out there remains very much a question, but they do accompany witnesses' statements that interstellar tourists are visiting NYC. Manhattan reported the most close encounters of any borough with with 13, including a 5:30 p.m. engagement on February 4th of last year, involving a motorist outside the Gotham a Gotham skyscraper. And there's. A lot of different pictures, but they basically look like trash okay. flying around in the air. Okay. Like, so I will share the pictures. Or the pictures will come up. Yeah. But there you go. I mean, it's kind of it's like a balloon. it's a balloon. It's a balloon. Right. There's several of those that just look like balloons, but people are still reporting more frequently in New York City. So that being said, yes, I'm gonna jump into a story that happened in New York City. So this is the story of the alien abduction of Linda Mat- Napolitano that was pulled up into a giant UFO and had 23 witnesses. Oh my gosh. They saw her go up in the UFO? Yep. Around 45% of Americans believe that UFOs exist and have visited Earth, while 25% believe that aliens have similar societies like humans. According to Ip- Ip- Ipsos, 2020 report. I don't know what Ipsos is. It doesn't have the thing. Um, there are many victims who claim to have been abducted by small, gray-colored humanoids. We call them the, the grays. grays. And then taken into spaceships for some experiments or mating. Among them, Linda Napolitano, Linda M- Napolitano's case is the most well-documented UFO encounter. Linda Napolitano who uses the pseudonym Linda Quartile. So you can Google Linda Quartile. I was searching it on YouTube, finding different stories. Okay. It kind of goes back and forth. A young woman in her 20s claims that in November of 1989, she'd been pulled, in, pulled up by gray humanoids from her bedroom window while her husband was asleep next to her. Okay. Soon after this, the horrific... Soon after this horrific accident, or incident rather, she can contacted Bud Hopkins, an American UFO researcher who even wrote the book entitled The True Story of the Brooklyn Bridge UFO Abductions. That's an entire another story. That's cool. Describing the UFO events that occurred in November 30 of 1989. Linda Napolitano, an American-Italian young woman said that on November 20th, 3.15 in the morning, she suddenly woke up, finding herself paralyzed and saw three non-human figures gray in color and with big heads that were floating in her bedroom. She could not call her husband as beings told her in in a language to stay quiet. She was pulled by a blue beam from her apartment's window on a 12th floor in Manhattan. Wow. She was levitating inside the beam that with three other aliens until they reached the giant spaceship that opened like a clam. And then there's going to be a photo. That she's got the, the depiction of it, like the sketch or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I'm standing up on nothing, and they take me out all the way up, way above the building. Oh, I hope I don't fall. The UFO Seriously. opens up almost like a clam, and then I'm inside. I see benches similar to regular benches, and they're bringing me down a hallway. Doors open like sliding doors. Inside are all these lights and buttons and a big, long table. I don't want to get up on that table. They get me on that table anyway. They start saying things to me, and I'm yelling. I I can still yell. One of them says something that sounds like knobby egg. I think that they were trying to tell me to be quiet because he he put his hand over my mouth. Interesting. So her abduction... 
Napolitano could not remember much about what happened inside the ship, but she recalled some sort of medical examinations. Why is it always got to be medical examinations? Always do. Why is it got to be like in like? Why do they have to experiment on us? Why can't they just give us a language changer and just talk with us? So, I mean, over the years, like they haven't gotten enough. I mean, exactly. Like we've already told like over the 25, ep- seven, six episodes or whatever. We told like six or seven stories about alien abductions. Why do they have to stick Our a needle? Our physiology is all the same. It's all yeah, right. DNA is DNA. Take it, one and done. So she recalled some sort of medical and examinations that had been done on her, and she remembered that she, that had passed through some procedures. Besides, besides, she had remembered that one of the aliens put something into her nasal cavity, and the pain was so unbearable that she lost consciousness. Three hours later, three hours later, she surprisingly found herself lying next to her husband was still sleeping interestingly she did an x-ray of her head and the doctor found something strange lodged inside her nose this encounter was not just limited to napolitano there were witnesses two security guards richard and dan confirmed to had have been watching napolitano with three humanoids being pulled up into a Shut large the UFO front door hovering near her apartment one of the guards felt guilty for not helping her and even say. suffered a nervous breakdown. Bud Hopkins. There was an oval-shaped object hovering over the top of the apartment building, two or three blocks up from where we sat. We didn't know where it came from. It happened too fast. Its lights turned from bright reddish-orange to a whitish-blue coming out of the bottom. Green lights rotated around the edge of the saucer, a little girl or woman wearing a white gown sailed out of the window in a fetal position and then stood in midair in this beam of light. I could see three of the ugliest creatures I've ever seen. I don't know what they were. They weren't human. Their heads were out of proportion, very large heads with no hair. Those buggers were escorting her into the craft. My partner screamed, we've got to get them. We tried to get it out of our car, but couldn't. After the woman was escorted in, the oval oval turned reddish orange again and whisked off. So they watched this thing in the sky Grab and her. pull her out, but they couldn't even get out of the car. I wonder if they had something to do with that. So there's some other interesting side How they have... stories that go into this story. Okay, like, I'll just wait then. Was she abducted or was she kidnapped? What's the difference? No, kidnapped by humans. Oh, well, right. not if somebody saw her in mid-space. There's some other theories that go down that route. Okay. We're not going to get into that part right now. Okay. Actually, Hopkins got his interest in Paul Tano's case after he received a letter from Richard and Dan in 1991. Upon researching more on these two men, Hopkins found out that they were both bodyguards of an important political figure. Hopkins reportedly believes that they were bodyguards of former UN statesman Javier Perez de Ciliar. I see that. Oh, I don't know. I can't. I'd have to see it. It's okay. Keep going. I'm pretty close. You're close. All right. The founder and director of the Mutual UFO Network, which we're familiar with, yes, MUFON, MUFON, right? Um, Walter H. Andrus strongly believed in Napolitano's story and called it definitely authentic. It was definitely an authentic case of a human abduction by aliens. Hmm. Andrus said he knows what the ETs are after. They have been using humans to further their species. Quartile's story is familiar to Philip Kloss, a former senior editor for Aviation Week and Space Technologies magazine, known as the Sherlock Holmes of Ufology. In his 1988 book, UFO Abductions and Dangerous, a dangerous game, Kloss described the emergence of what he calls an alien abduction cult among UFO enthusiasts. In the last episode, you talked a little bit about this, mm-hmm. right? Is it part of a psychological thing? Is it... It's a physiological, psychological... Do you want to be part of a group that... Yeah. Right? So, the book examines numerous claims of ET abductions, abducting... ETs abducting young children and taking flesh samples, impregnating young Jeez. women with alien semen, and then returning to remove their unborn babies which we talked about as well right so the short video below we're not going to get into that but there's a video you can go out and search and it'll talk about quartiles apartment stuff like that us ufo skepticism Kloss 
devoted several issues of his UFO skeptics newsletter newsletter to court to the Quartile case, uncovering implausible ideas and major discrepancies in her story and it's handling by Hopkins. So this guy's kind of counter right to Hopkins. Okay. That's an interesting thing that's come up for both of our stories this week, right? There's been the counterpoint right. to There's something this that's causing this. It's, it's just a little not, fishy. It's just not extraterrestrial. Right. Yeah. It's a little fishy, but it depends on what you believe. Right. Right. You got to go into all this stuff with a little Open. bit Open. skeptical. Oh, I mean I was right? Going the other way, but you, open. You should be a little. You give me like, well, there's just aliens flying all around us. Right. Way. I'm pretty skeptical. Think so? Yeah. Until I see a UFO. I saw a shooting star the other night. Does That's that just a shooting star. Yeah. Anyway, so. Oh, but was it a shooting star? See, that's what I'm saying. So. Right. <laughs> could be a UFO. For example, Corta later added her story to her story that her son had been abducted as well. Two months earlier, and that a craft that had crashed. That a craft that took her crashed into the East River. No such incident was reported by any witnesses. Claus said that the two alleged security agents, Dan and Richard, have never been found. Although Hopkins allegedly arranged for them to meet Cortile in her apartment. And remember, Cortile is the same name as the, you know, previously. Right. Napolitano. Uh, Napolitano. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. She later claimed that Dan Dan kidnapped her from her Manhattan Street house and took her to a CIA safe house. As Kloss, and Kloss said, Hopkins claims to have received a letter, letter from a third man who witnessed the incident. The world leader refused to step forward. So so they're saying the world leader's guys kidnapped her and took she, him? Yeah. Or she's changing her story she's now. She's changing her story up. Interesting. But there have been so many people that saw it happen. I was like, how could you... How could you explain a kidnapping that she floated on air? Right. So it's an interesting one where people are like, I unless saw they, it. Unless they sprayed some but sort of this, hallucinogenic in that, the air. Is this that the original guy, uh, Bud Hopkins, making stuff up? Right. right. Okay. Could be. This one kind of sounds like that, right? 12th story, New York City. Nobody sees a UFO hovering in some I mean, but lights. some people did. 3 o'clock in the morning, though. It is 3.15. city that never sleeps, though. But there's... If they're more in a, if they were up that high, first of all, how many people at 3:50 in the morning are looking up in the sky? They're usually stumbling home, um, or they're with their friends and they're busy having conversations. I mean, how many people look up in the sky at 3:15 while they're just uh, randomly walking? Yeah, you're, you're in the city. You're not just yeah. constantly looking. Exactly. Up. So I mean, like I mean, me and you would be because like, oh my god, look at these buildings. I don't think I would because I we heard somebody the, say we live in the woods. I heard somebody say once that if you haven't seen a UFO, it's because you aren't looking. I was like, oh, that's a good point. It's true. I'm not looking. Cause I got better things to look for. Not UFOs. I mean, I gotta, I gotta find my dog, my cat, my beer. <laughs> so Hopkins reportedly believed it was Javier Perez de Lasillar, who was Secretary General. Like I'd said, despite mounting evidence against Cortile's story, even some MUFON members were skeptical. Why would he kidnap her, though? I don't know. With Napolitano, the only Napolitano that I know that's famous is Janet Napolitano. That's what I wrote. She's passed Napolitano. away a long time yeah. ago. When right. she, uh, what was she? She was a uh, elected official. Yeah, she was absolutely. She was in Arizona, and she was That's a why federal or yeah, something like that. I can't remember exactly what she was. She had short hair, right? Yeah, yeah. So Andrews called it a case of the century. However, there is much skepticism about Napolitano's case. Some people compared it with the sci-fi fiction novels *Night Eyes*, which I have not read. Me neither. Which was published in 1989. But at the same time, there are 23 eyewitnesses who saw the strangeness that night. So you go into it and you go, what do you do with that? Right? It's just an add on to there are hundreds or thousands of these stories. Right? Yeah. This was in 89. Okay. We're talking 30, 3, 4 years ago at this yeah. point. Right? There was no cell phones back then nope. taking video. There was the big cameras you had to carry on your shoulder back then. Yeah, VHS tape cameras and stuff like that. So, who knows? But I really was interested in, like, does this happen in big cities? Yes. Because I... I feel like it happens, again, that New England coast for some reason. That whole... The top part of the north, you know, the north of the east coast... New England, yeah. Seems to have a lot of... Connecticut, Maryland, New Hampshire, Maine. Maine, yeah. Yeah. It seems like a lot of stories come out of there. It's almost like, you know how a lot of hauntings happen in the South? Yeah. It's like a lot of 
There's some hauntings up in the Northeast. Oh, too, no, so. there's a lot still there, but the, <laughs> yeah. a lot of them you hear. But yeah, it's just old school, creepy things like that about the New England yeah. states and the, that seacoast area. I don't know. Can I ask questions? Sure, of course. Or yeah, make statements? So it's Let's really go. funny because you said her son was abducted. And that seems like they almost do keep it in, in lineage. In the family? Yeah, like they, they will abduct a mom and then... Her kid, we've, and we've then heard down the road, about that, grandkid. Absolutely. Like you know, it's almost like they're following the family tree to see. I don't know genetically what genetically if they're changing, changing or, or you know. Um, but they do tend to like. They uh, there's lots of things that I read that say it stays in a family. That usually, if you're abducted, it means somebody before you from your family was abducted. Even if it's two generations before. Yeah. Or a generation so before, I think that's so. really weird because that one I was talking about with the guy that we were talking about the recordings a little. I don't remember if it was the show or the show I did, but um. His kid was abducted See? and he chased after them and bargained with them. Like, just please leave him alone. Take if you me. leave him alone, you can take me whenever you want. Mm. And his kid was never abducted. I think again. I probably admit uh, now. I don't have kids. So I think that's probably something a parent would do. Is that something? A parent? Yeah. <laughs> especially if recalling. Like, ah, take how, Greg Jr. <laughs> take him. Just don't like take once. me. Um, especially after hearing your own tapes, you're probably like, I don't want to make my kid go through that. I guess that. that's probably true. You know, yeah. um, because mentally, I think this might be really hard on some people. Some people deal with it. Okay, so if they're aliens, they're going to be like, okay, we'll take you for your whole life. How do you know they're not taking your kid as soon as you die? I know. Or how do you know they're not taking their kid when you aren't catching them taking yeah, your kid? Yeah, and there's really... Yeah. Well, this also gave me some things I want to look up from a book perspective. What's that? Oh, the, uh, the, the book, The, 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 Nights, the, Night, Night, the Night, Night, Night Eyes, and then there was the other one... Um, the story, the Brooklyn UFO incident in yeah. 89. I want yeah. to look that up too. Yeah, so. the Brooklyn Bridge UFO Brooklyn incident. Bridge, that's what it was. Yeah, absolutely. So, awesome. Just another UFO story out there. Another it's fun. abduction story. I love these stories. They're just cool. They're, I mean, I'm a, I'm a skeptic, this like one, I said, because I haven't like seen one, Travis, but I still love these stories. The Fire in the Sky, Travis Walton one. Yeah. That one is more believable than this one to me. But this one has more people. I don't know that it's any more it. believable. It's just vastly different. Like It's in the woods of Flagstaff, Arizona. And maybe it's because I know that area. Like, we, I know Flagstaff. Right. I, we, I don't want to say I grew up there, but I lived in Arizona for 20 years. Right. I know where this happened. Yeah. And you go, okay, New York City, There's it's the city that never sleeps. I don't know. There's something to that to me. I mean, it's I like, could see it both ways. I could see, like, why would you go to a heavily dense area or populated area? But why wouldn't you? I don't Especially know. if you go at like three o'clock in the morning, you can just pick somebody up. And beat There's them probably up. nights that are slower than like say the weekends, like Thursday through Sunday. It's probably <laughs> happening. Like but Monday night, through good, Wednesday, it's, a good it's alien you know, abduction night. It's quieter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Awesome. Thank you so much for for listening to this one. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Go out, like, subscribe to yes, the Castro Files if you don't mind. Yes. Another great episode of good the story, Alien honey. Abduction. I There's it. a whole catalog of other ones we've done from. Sasquatches to aliens to haunted mirrors to all sorts of things. All sorts make, of good stuff. Make sure you go out and like, subscribe. We'll have some links in the in the uh, pop it up right about now. So thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. Yes, thanks guys. Cheers. Take